Alright, welcome back to my Traveler Solo Scout campaign, which has taken on a life of its own. Um, just to show you where we're at right now. Uh, our crew, well, there's previous videos you can watch and the stuff they went through here in the local system, but they've jumped to this first a system to explore Qatari, and then based on some random rolls, it quickly escalated into actually running into an alien civilization and uh, first contact situation we have right here. So I've taken the rabbit trail. Um, we basically got our crew on this cube full of specimens, plant <coughs> and animal, which the guess is. Um, and they did do a full survey of Qatari from orbit. You can see that in previous videos. But they had to explore the cube first before they'd even think about landing on the planet. And now they are in the midst of what looks like a first contact situation here. So what I then did is uh, went off on a side and used uh, something called Pocket Empires to build out um, potential alien and or human, who knows right now, empires in this region. And in the last video I went ahead and using the core rules here from Traveler uh, at least created all the uh, all the main worlds on all of these. So once I've got all the main worlds, I can look at them and decide which ones make sense for uh, home worlds according to Pocket Empires, which is from Traveler 4. Uh, and I did, looking at this, it looks like we got three empires here. The one we're dealing with today is the Surin Empire, but we've also got what I'd call the Zashin Empire, and then there's one stashed up here. Um, which I haven't got a name for. <laughs> and then the interesting thing is uh, two of these came out as Corsair or Pirate bases, which who knows what's going to happen with that. So my goal today is um, to start building out this Surin Empire because that's going to directly influence how the first contact um, carries out uh, when I get back to the crew here. And the first step there is to leverage the pocket empires to get much more detail on this Surin homeworld, which will probably drive the nature of the rest of this empire. So in this video, I just want to show you, I'm not going to roll during that. I've already done the rolls and calculations. It's pretty involved um, to figure out what the Surin empire uh, is. So coming over here, uh, we do see the the results I have, just a little background on this Surin homeworld, uh, a little bigger than Earth, Earth plus two, 1.4 gra uh, gravities, <coughs> exotic air, so if uh, our crew end up going there <coughs> to visit or hostages, <coughs> they're going to need an air supply. Temperatures Earth-like, <coughs> oceans Earth-like, tens of billions of people, a religious dictatorship kind of wrestling with that too. <coughs> now the first thing I had to do um, to flush out, I didn't quite finish everything on the main Traveler, Mongoose Traveler rules. There is a section where you figure out factions <coughs> um, on a world and it's a D3 uh, with a modifier depending on government <coughs> and in our case the uh, the D causes a uh, <coughs> minus one less chance and I did roll a two so there's one faction rolled for its relative strength and it came out as a minor group but you also roll for the government type they want <coughs> and this is a captive government so there's there's an interesting backstory there to develop uh, was it always present and taken over by the ruling government or is it even a other species I don't know don't have to sort that out now, but that's something to file away. <coughs> and then you get to roll for cultural differences, just to see if there's something unique. Roll to high. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> they're distrusted. Travelers are distrusted. <coughs> Frowns on those who leave their homes, so that's potentially something to factor in. <coughs> their world is full of so many people, maybe they just found it inevitable that they had to start expanding here, which we'll unpack. <laughs> law level, totally all weapons and armor is against the law. Got a good uh, starport, got a high port, 
military base, naval base, and they're <coughs> tech level 12. Um, the other thing I had to figure out was the trade codes because those are going to be modifiers in uh, pocket empires. And if we go to trade code, tra yeah, not travel code, trade code here, and <laughs> basically you work through the results and see which one of these match um, these right here, and they all have their own <laughs> kind of uh, uh, mod uh, abbreviation. So we did get fluid oceans. Um, not quite sure what that means. I can I'll look that up and see. Uh, but we got definitely industrial, high population, high tech. Um, you know, potentially this atmosphere exotic, maybe due to the high industrialization. Don't know, but <laughs> this planet is just for a reference. It's a little bit bigger than Earth. And it's got uh, some more population than Earth. It's more populated than Earth. Combination both probably its size and um, growth. I mean, it looks like a good part of it is uh, oceans. So, and it's, you know, it's military and naval. I haven't figured out the religious dictatorship. But armed with that information, um, you know, this one may have an impact on the first contact cultural differences <laughs> but armed with that information the next thing we look at now are the uh, pocket empire stuff um, and there's some uh, interesting there's a whole process to go through and it's kind of involved but I'm starting to d document it here but uh, one of the first things you roll for I'm going to take this away for now is if here we come into pocket empires and you have to figure out gas giants, planetoid belts, because for a higher tech level, they can take advantage of these, which increases the economic output of the system. So I leveraged the pocket empire rolls for this. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, instead of going through the full um, world builder, so I'm going to use these as a base. And you do see gas giant and planetoid belt. It's just a straight roll. And let me see. Yeah. Gas Giants is 2d6, and Planetoid Belts is 2d6 plus the number of Gas Giants. So with those rolls, I came up with four Gas Giants <coughs> and seven Planetoid Belts. This is a busy area that they're taking advantage of all of this, it looks like. Um, then we figured out the shipyard, just put that in. And then you roll 1d10 population modifier. It's just an arbitrary roll from what I can see. And that's going to impact the economics later on down the road. Okay. So let me check my notes over here. Yeah, population mandatory. Yeah, we got that. Gas giants got that. And then you actually go to the economics so um, portion of the book. And if we look at this, we're going to roll for resources, infrastructure. They actually call it um, the economic extension. Um, it's actually the extension for the planet, like the UWP, except that now it unpacks it and gives you more information about what are the economics, because you got to calculate the GWP resources, etc. <coughs> and that economics is made up of uh, a resource number, a labor, an infrastructure, and a culture number. So if we come over here, I did generate, here we go, EE -E numbers. Um, and then, so for resources, I rolled a 9, but you also get DRMs from here, depending on your uh, trade code, and I think industrial helped them a lot. You see plus 2 here, and uh, plus 2 on infrastructure. So, but they actually got a total of um, 11 DRMs. Uh, let me see there, resources, hold on, let me pull that up real quick. So here's a section of uh, the Pocket Empires, and <coughs> you have two ways to do economics. They have a shortened version, which I'm, I'm going for. I don't, I don't need to, <coughs> at this point, I don't necessarily want to deep dive this too much. This gives me enough. So we generate the economic extensions, and if we come down here, talk about resources, here it is to computer world, roll 2D minus 2. Um, and 
If it's tech level 8 or greater, add the number of planetoid belts and gas giants. So, 4 gas giants, 7 is 11, um, so we're getting 11 DRMs right out of the box. But then if we, uh, if we look at the chart, they also get uh, fluid oceans, high population, kind of even each other out. <coughs> but they get a plus two, so they're getting monstrous DRMs. So they just max out for resources. They get an F. Uh, so that one's easy. Then we go to uh, the labor calculation. And when we look at the labor calculation, here it is. <coughs> um, number of men, women, and children residing on the world. Indicates the number of people directly involved in creation of wealth. Labor is computed by subtracting one from the world's population. Well, that's straightforward. So we see the labor is, uh, they have an A population, so their labor is 10 minus 1 is 9. Then we move on to infrastructure. <coughs> includes transportation, communications, etc. Uh, is constrained by the level of resources. Well, with an F resources, you're not constrained. Um, to determine the initial infrastructure of given world 2D minus 2, and then apply DMs from the trade code table and starport table. Can't be greater than a resource score, nor the tech level score. Okay. So if we do that, we roll uh, 2D minus 2, I got a 7 minus 2, and then we got a 6 DRM. So we're looking at infrastructure here, and if we look at, uh, sorry, it's a little small, I get a plus one for high population, plus three because they're industrial, <coughs> and I think they're fluid, none of the other ones. <coughs> but then we've got, this is a plus three for a B-type, we're at plus six. Yep, and that's right. <coughs> so we got five and, oh, five and six, we get a B. That's an 11, that's a B. Okay, so this is a serious planet. Plenty of resources, solid infrastructure. And then we roll for culture, which will impact other things down the road. Um, certain set of values, <coughs> bureaucracy, roll 2D, <coughs> DMs from the trade card table again. I haven't quite got my arms around culture, but let's look at it here. Uh, fluid, for whatever reason, gives a plus one. Um, industrial gives nothing. And uh, I think we had one more. High tech gives nothing. Plus one industrial. So they only get a plus one, it looks like. Yep, and that's what I got here. So their culture is nine. Not quite sure what that means yet now. But we'll see it later as we calculate um, other things. Okay. So then we have our, if we had our economic expansion value, it would be F9B9. Okay. So we've established that. Then we move into planetary demand. Um, that's a number to throw. Okay. Uh, there's different procedures for that. But. Total demand is less than, well, let's see. When, <coughs> when I calculated it, it's, uh, I'm going to go to the total demand table. Um, where is that? Here we go. And first we've got to figure out the base demand. 5 plus 3 is 8. 15 total demand. Right at equilibrium. Okay. Let's see if we can <coughs> do this here. Oh, here it is. If the world has a population code of four or more, the base demand for that world is equal to its resource score. Ouch. <coughs> if the population code is three or lower. So, uh, and you can't exceed it. Total demand is the maximum amount of resource points any economy will process in a given year. Um, the value list of the density column is the total demand. Okay. So, let's see, I think we did a roll for total demand, we got an 8, and we cross-index with 15, 
it's 15. Okay, so what, what that's telling us now is, and this is probably why they need to expand, they're generating enough <coughs> to meet their needs. They're not less, um, so they can't export, <coughs> and they're not more, requiring them to import. But they're right at equilibrium, but now they recognize that they have to go out and start getting other places. Part of the reason they're doing Qatari here. Um, and then we talk about uh, resources exploitable. Let's look at that here. They talk about this. And I don't think we use that here. Yeah, this is what they talk about if infrastructure is that or that. Um, and then we we got to figure out some numbers here ultimately to calculate the base GWP okay and yeah this kind of the resource trade it goes out the window <coughs> resources minus total demand uh, 15 minus 15 is zero so they're not trading or exporting <coughs> which kind of starts to match up with this <coughs> they're going out to find more resources here now we calculate <coughs> the base gross world product <coughs> rather involved here um, let's you know we get the multiplier here let's see where it is here <coughs> yeah here we go you gotta figure out each one of these labor factor <coughs> multiplied by the base so we got that eight times a hundred let's see there's another table for that a lot of tables in this one <coughs> finished goods I don't think I've done that have I no that's later so <coughs> labor multi eight. Oh, a their base their labor base is from there they got a nine which is a hundred multiplier and then we multiply by the eight <coughs> we got from here it's probably some of how efficient their labor force is. Then we throw in the infrastructure is eight from above, <coughs> the culture is nine, and then we plug that into the, uh, the GWP here. And see, we got 18 resources exploitable. Okay, we calculated that earlier. <coughs> by 18, the labor factor, which is base multiplied by the population multiplier. And then infrastructure, which is 11. And then we divide it by the culture plus 1. Interesting. I think that's right. Yeah, that's a plus sign. So it divides by 10, so that's rather easy. We get a 15.8 thousand RUs, whatever that means. Okay. But then we get a finished goods multiplier, which is affected by the starport here so there is some limited trading <coughs> and there's a calculator here um, let's see there's a finished goods chart too I'd like to automate this to be honest I think yeah finished goods number of worlds traded with plus your starport generates a multiplier a multiplier and I think what I did was I said six worlds um, if we come back and look at the subsector map, I said they've got their one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, maybe they're not trading with this one, so it's just not a man. But I'll say there's some form of trading with this other empire here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it doesn't vary a lot, so I mean it's not. So if we look at this, uh, but look at this here. We got a B starport. 6 we get a 1.185 so that should be our multiplier here um, interstellar demand sorry I'm trying to remember what I did maybe next time as I go through some of these <coughs> other planets <coughs> I'll actually generate them live now that I'm kind of getting the procedure here <coughs> interstellar demand oh this yeah I'm just said that to one that actually changes from turn to turn in this game. <coughs> I'm going to baseline it with one. I remember that. 
So your final GDMP <coughs> is, uh, you know, the demand change, the multiplier, and the base. So we do get uh, <coughs> one eight. Well, that's a little big here. I think I added too many numbers. There we go. 18,770 RUs. Now this is where it gets interesting. Then you figure out the taxation level to figure out how much the government gets. Um, and I think it's just a series of total tax rate equals base, social, and discretionary. Uh, discretionary is if the player wants to add stuff during this year to finance something, which I'm going to assume is zero this turn. <coughs> so the tax level is 0 0.4 for a D government, a law level, culture level, that high culture level, we're seeing that now, divided by 100. And if we look at that real quick, base tax rate, government type is a D, so there's the 0.4. And then you have modifiers. Um, let me see, where did I get those? I'll have to come over here. Uh, hold a second. So I got 0.4 as a base. Then I have to figure out the social tax rate. Oh, here it is down here. It's a law level plus culture divided by 100. So 9 and 9 is 18. It's 0.18. If I read that right, yep, 0.18. Um, yeah, based on, okay, 0.18, so 0.4 and 0.18 is, holy smoke, you know, they're taxed at 0.58% of what they're making, so uh, that's pretty big, but I think it's a big part of it is the government, and then we've got this law level and culture high, so that tells us actually some more about the culture here, or about the planet, they're pretty controlled and highly taxed. Uh, Wouldn't you multiply this, you get your government budget, and then you have to calculate civilian expenses. Yeah. Tax rate times GWP, we got that. <coughs> and then we do civilian expenses is cultural... I did civilian, not military yet, because I haven't explored that. Or cultural infrastructure maintenance. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, so you add, basically, you add these three numbers and divide by 100. Um, times A, times administrative factor, I'll just set it once, government type, times government budget, which I haven't done. So, uh, looks like about 0.26 there. So let's look at this here, government expense, government type D, it's 1.05. Okay, and then we have... I think that's it. Administrative expense. I just set that at one. That's kind of every year your leader, if it's a captive government, negotiates. But this is ours, so that's going to drop off. So then, government expense, though, I get a 1.0. I get a 1.05. So, government type factor, government budget. Okay, this is where I kind of messed up. Uh, well, no, half the budget. Half the budget. I think that's what I got here. Yeah. So, p 0.26 of this is the actual civilian expenses. Okay, which I didn't do. So let me do that real quick. You can see how the sausage is made. Um, so the government budget is... Why have I got such big numbers here? 108868RUs. Let me look at that. Alrighty, I think I got this here. Um, got some weird numbers in there, but we do see the final uh, GWP 18770. <coughs> Based on a 0.58 tax rate, that gives 10,886 resource units available in the government budget. What portion of that budget is civilian expenses? And basically, we'll do this right now, you throw in your culture, plus your infrastructure, plus your uh, labor, or law and order, my bad, because we need all this to keep this going. So high culture, 
lot of infrastructure, uh, maintaining law and order. I guess that's law enforcement agencies, etc. Um, so that gives 989 divided by 100. Okay. And when we do that portion, uh, we get 0.26. Let me validate my number here. Sorry, that was an easy validation because um, I'm dividing by 10. So we come down here. Uh, yeah, 9 and 8 is 726.26. And then we multiply that 0 0.26 times the administrative factor, which I'm going to, uh, let's see, 1, I'm just going to say for now. We can look at, uh, let's see if they've got it here, administrative factor. Uh, and that's that chart where you can measure it. Let's pull that back up here. Yeah, administrative, and I'm just going to arbitrarily set it at 1. But the one I didn't take into effect was D is a 1.05, so that's times 1.05, and then it's times, the last thing we multiply by is the government budget. So I will pull up my handy dandy calculator and see. So we do have the government budget, um, so we're going to multiply it. <coughs> Uh, 1.05. So we got, we're going to say there's the government budget, <coughs> and we're going to multiply it first by 0.26. That's the civilian, so we got that. And then we're going to multiply it by 1.05. And the civilian is 2972. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. 2, 972 RUs. Okay. It turns it into Russ. Anyway, <coughs> so of the government budget, they need approximately 3,000 for that. Um, so they do have an excess due to the high tax rate, and we'll figure out uh, in a later video what the heck to do with it. Military expenses, if I had it, military maintenance, a, and government type factor. But to figure out military maintenance, <coughs> I have to figure out the military. Cost of maintenance, supplies, salary, add up the size of each unit. So we're going to have to, that's another video, if I need to figure that out. Um, I don't know if I need it here. Yeah, and then there was actually, I found a military budget table that may have had a different effect. I don't know where it was. I did find one. I don't know if that's percentage of, they have a lot of excess money. So I'm going to have to wrestle with that if I need to, you know, build that out later. So there's some future um, things to figure out. <coughs> now, we've gone through all those. Now actually what we <laughs> do is we circle back and let's see if my procedures are right. We figure out stuff like, uh, oh yeah, it's back up here. So that was the economics, um, but now what we have to figure out is, uh, they have <coughs> a nice setup here, here we go. For the individual world, we're going to focus on now, self-determination, popularity, okay, that's what we're figuring out here. <coughs> and then, um, military power, economic power, prestige, we'll figure all that out later too. <coughs> so... We come up over here to self-determination. Let me see where that is here. <coughs> All right, here we go. Self-determination measure how much individuals want to take control of their own lives, <coughs> how tolerant they are with certain types of government types. <laughs> Single value from zero to ten. <coughs> zero, want to run my own life. <coughs> ten, tell me what to do. Um, for NPC worlds. A roll of 2D minus 2 should be used. <coughs> Players can pick it, but I'm going to do a 2D minus 2. And I get an interesting uh, result here. <coughs> 4. So, they're kind of halfway. But with this government and this tax rate, 
there's some got to figure this one out I mean if, if we need to get that far okay then we can figure out the popularity um, <coughs> base population let's see what we got here the popularity is calculate return base level and action bonus which we don't have <coughs> remember this is written for a game where you play one turn as one year and we things that the meta task as the government does during the turn gives an action bonus here so we just need to figure out the base value here and let me see where I figured this out at okay I found it in the rules base equals tech culture infrastructure um, those are pluses minus uh, law level which is a difference between that and self-determination um, government type uh, the number is always positive world with government 10 and self-determination again uh, and then uh, world discretionary tax which is zero and other applicable DMs something about marriage etc so they don't apply so looking at the popularity we have a tech at 12 culture of 9 I'm doing this right infrastructure of 12 and then we get these deltas uh, law level 9 minus self-determination 4 gives a negative 5 and then we have determination of 4 and a government 11 that's a lot of that's tension there and it's always positive so this number is 7 and 5 is 12 so they got 12 drops this 12 here but 12 and 9 is 21 and it's F so in spite of this tension it appears this the government is very popular with an F um, let's see and it does say 0 to 15 yeah final popularity including the action bonus and leader may exceed final popularity including action and leadership so the base is limited to 15 F so at least for now there is a very popular um, very popular government which now brings us into the home stretch and this is world character the world populations he's gonna be right he's got a man NPC okay so now we're gonna just talk about the world character in general generating progression planning advancement growth militancy unity <coughs> and tolerance and this is where I was starting to build a narration and this thing threw a twist at me based on these results um, so if we come up here let's look at the tables again yeah I got them uh, that's tapestry of stars and here we go uh, progression and they're potentially gonna have modifiers let's do this above here so progression 2d with following DMS uh, you know in a whole slew of them here population 6 plus DM plus 1 uh, and I think I just put population 9 plus there's a DM plus 2 uh, culture is not less than that so we got a plus 2 culture 8 plus plus 3 so I think I rolled a 7 plus 3 is 10 which gives us a conservative then we go to planning and conservative adds plus two and I rolled a die and uh, I think I rolled low which gave me a three and two is five let's see planning is five <coughs> short term two to five years interesting kind of like five-year plans okay advancement uh, I think we got a good result here Advancement 2D law if progressiveness is conservative plus three and then we rolled and I think I got a six which gave me a nine which means well at least they're advancing they're advancing they're not stagnant <coughs> or indifferent that's really good they're just short term though growth okay this is another interesting here uh, level of competitiveness within the society uh, and when I rolled for growth I think uh, culture 3 minus culture 8 plus DM plus 1 
and I must have rolled a 7, which gave me an 8, which means they're unaggressive. I guess they're harmonious. They don't fight amongst themselves. They're not competitive or expansionist. They kind of work together, which kind of fits under this religious concept. Um, and then militancy. This was a big one. I had a so-called... I had a narration going in my mind that they may be somewhat militant. They're going to hold them hostage and we're going to have a rescue situation or whatever, but uh, if we look at this, they're not passive, so there's no... It looks like no um, no modifiers and for militancy I got neutral okay harmonious religious um, uh, mar you know planet uh, they all get along they plan in the short term so this changed it they're not militant but uh, let's see they're neutral but they're not peaceable or conciliatory so don't push them, okay? They're not going to go out of their way to be militant, but don't push them, okay? I think that's what I'm reading there. <coughs> and then the unity kind of got the harmonious concept here. Um, and then there's a bunch of DMs here, government, government 7, DM plus 3, so somehow, though, I, <coughs> I got a 4, Roll 2D with the following DMs. Law 4, negative, plus 1. <coughs> Law A plus, no. Government, no. Government 7. Government F. Growth is passive. None of, there's no modifiers from this one. Uh, so it looks like a straight roll. <coughs> and they actually got uh, harmonious. So that fits it. Um, and then we go to tolerance. Starport B, DM minus one, uh, but plus one for conservative. So it looks like a plus one, and we got a tolerance of neutral. There it is. Um, so this is an interesting society as I wrestle with it. Uh, I believe they are religious society. I mean, I, th I think of the B5, Babylon 5, the Minbari or something. But they even had their divisions, at least initially, they had their three castes, and they all got along, workers, military, and religious. But we do, and then there's a religious leader, so I'm feeling these are like the Minbari. Um, I'll have to think about it more, but then this directly impacts um, the this uh, first contact we're going to do here. Um, there are some other things I could do to build it out, the military, etc., but <coughs> this gives me a more detailed picture of this society and how they're going to react. Um, they're probably, well, neutral. <laughs> and I don't think growth's unaggressive. They're not out proselytizing all the sector or anything, too. I think... Um, this is a very, you know, they're in their bubble, they stay in their world. The only reason they're going Guitari is they recognize with their short-term planning now that <laughs> their population is right at their resource level, so they have to expand. Um, so I think I'll end it here. I went long enough. I th I'll try and streamline this better for the next ones, but I hope you see there's a lot of detail, and this is informing me how to handle this. I'm going honestly back and forth between you know, the solo campaign and our crew focusing on them, and then also building out empires and pocket empires and relationships with them. So I, I just find this intriguing. Um, the next step would be uh, for the Surin Empire is uh, building out these three worlds, which probably will be colonies or outposts. I'll have to look at the values. And then potentially I have to build out this empire um, because they're going to talk about it, but <laughs> there's my next step. I'm going to build out the rest of the worlds, and there are some overall empire characteristics to figure out, which I can't do until I build out all those worlds. And then with all that knowledge in hand, we will return to our intrepid crew and the first contact and uh, see how that plays out. So, 
Anyway, uh, if you've held on this long, I'm at 40 minutes. I was hoping this to be short, but as you can see, like the uh, planet builder or world builder process, which we did for Qatari, which gave us a lot of great details here. Um, this uh, Pocket Empires is giving us a lot of detail here, beyond what we probably need for a simple campaign, but <coughs> maybe this is my Wargamer side. Uh, this, I just find this really intriguing to build out these alien empires and then, uh, you know, see if they had a relationship with the uh, Imperium before the Long Night. That's a possibility, too. So, <coughs> um, yeah, turn in next time. And we'll build out, you'll see the rest of the Surin Empire. Hopefully I'll have a streamlined process, which I'll work through uh, for one of the planets. Uh, I won't do all of them live. And then we'll put them all together and see what the Empire is as a whole. Um, the rule actually have, the Pocket Empire rules actually have, once you've built out empires, you can compare their overall statistics to then generate how they relate to each other. So is this peaceable? Is there a war? Is there tension? I, you know, this will be interesting to figure out here. And then this one, I'll save, and we got pirates up here, but plenty of food for campaigns here for the scouts and a naval campaign. Um, I don't think the Surins are going to say, oh, you can have this planet. So <coughs> basically, this is a dead end here. They're on a, they're on a border with another empire. So we'll see how that plays out, too. So, anyway, gone long enough. Thank you very much for listening. Comments appreciated. Apologize. Uh, like I said, the next one I'll try and do more streamlined. Uh, and if you like, click like. Otherwise, tune in next time. And as one of my viewers has said, uh, you'll see how the sausage is made as we build out the rest of the Surin Empire. Thanks for listening.